Okay, brothers and sisters, we again are part of Jesus' team that he uses for the salvation of souls, that he empowers us. And so every team has a good offense, but it also has a good defense, a good apologetics, a way of knowing what we believe so that we can defend what we believe. And today we're talking about purgatory. Um, you know, people oftentimes say, Purgatory doesn't exist in the scriptures, and uh, that's true that purgatory as a word does not exist in the scriptures. But you know what else doesn't exist in the scriptures? The word Trinity. Um, And we still believe in the Trinity, the fact that there is one God, uh, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so just in the way that we can believe in the Trinity, even though that word does not um, exist in the scriptures, its teaching does exist in the scriptures. And so even though purgatory as a word doesn't exist in the scriptures, its teaching does. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, it actually says that Jesus Christ descends and preaches to those in prison. So Jesus is preaching um, after the resurrection to the souls that are not in heaven yet, um, but that have died. And you're like, huh, that's interesting. But Jesus also talked about this kind of place while he was living. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 32, he speaks about a sin um, and a a very dangerous sin of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And he says, And whoever says a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. Huh. So you can't be forgiven if you say something against the Son, but if you say something against the Spirit, you can't be forgiven in this age, this life, or in the age to come. What is the age to come? We would say that that is purgatory, that what Jesus is describing within these scriptures is a preparation point. Now, there's only two final destinations for our life. And our actions and our faith determines where we will go. That is either hell, which is real, or heaven. But all of us, when we die, have um, this attachment to this world. Heaven is for those people that um, have been prepared, that by their life have lived a very saintly life, um, and that have no attachment to this world. And so Jesus, in his mercy, knows that we are not perfect, that we have some attachment to this world, that although we've wanted to build a foundation upon him, there are some imperfections. And so he prepares us for the beautiful gift of heaven by drawing us toward itself. And we call that process of being made ready for heaven in our own imperfections purgatory. What is the scriptural basis for this? Well, we can see In Maccabees, this is the Old Testament, Um, in the book of Maccabees, um, you know, they had been fighting and they take up a collection, man by man, to give a mount of 2,000 drachmas of silver and sent it to Jerusalem to provide for a sin offering. In doing this, he acted very well and honorably, taking account of the resurrection. For if he were not expecting that those who had fallen would rise again. It would have been superfluous and foolish to pray for the dead. But if he was looking to the splendid reward that is laid up for those who fall asleep in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Therefore he made atonement for the dead, that they might be delivered from their sin. So we read in Second Maccabees, this process why people have died um, with some sin, and then we here on earth can pray for them so that they can be prepared for the resurrection of heaven. Now, you might say, well, that's the Old Testament. Well, the Old Testament is the inspired word of God as well, but there's also in the New Testament. You can look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, In the 15th verse, um, we get a very specific way in which we hear about our preparation. Um, In verse 11, it says, 
For no other foundation can one lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is our foundation. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, each man's works will become manifest, or the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. So the foundation is Jesus, but by our works, what kind of structure did we build upon our foundation of Jesus? Gold and silver and precious stones, those are good, but then there are some works that are not good, that are straw and stubble, and it will be made manifest on the judgment day what kind it is. And so then it continues. Um, if the works which any man has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. And so that's purgatory. Um, we might have a structure that we're building up, hopefully good and holy of gold and silver and precious stones, but there are some of our works that are not good, our sins, and that is the straw and stubble. And as we are brought through purgatory, this process of preparation, it's expressed to be like a fire that burns away the things that aren't good, that straw and that stubble. And there's less, there's loss, but through this process, we will be saved. And so this is only for the people that have already started with the foundation of Jesus and have built good structures that those parts and those imperfections will be burnt away and they will be saved. Meaning that through the process of purgatory, we are prepared for heaven. This is a beautiful teaching and one that can be found in the scriptures. Let us continue to memorize these scripture verses, think through how we're going to respond to people's questions so that we can give a good defense uh, of our faith and we can help other people to understand the beauty of our tradition. God bless.